Good morning. Good morning, you guys. Sitting outside of this community room or the entertainment room, I think they call it. Quite chill, quite chilly this morning. I want to do a little bit of yoga. I think it's kind of breezy though, so I may just record a little bit of practice and share some snippets with you of my personal practice when I'm not going to a yoga studio and some of the things that I will free flow through. So if you are interested in seeing how I hold my own practice, what I move through, what's important to me, then just keep watching. After sharing with you, let's say, a peek into my personal practice, that was 15 minutes. Pretty much got out of bed, had the water, didn't have my coffee yet. Flowed through a couple rounds of Sun A. My own expression of a Sun B. Hit some lunging postures, warming up, building some heat in the lower half of the body. Balancing work, which I think is really, really key. And Graham just had plans today, so I'm just trying to get in what I can this morning. I did very little inversion play. Handstand, sometimes you hit those, sometimes you don't. I had it for a second for a little bit of a hold and then fell, because that's life. And then you just get back up and you move on. And then I did a little bit of arm balance play, which has inspired my next yoga with me video. If you are interested in figuring out how to hit your crow pose, balancing on your hands, I was trained and just after teaching for the last four years and seeing different students' bodies and seeing different practitioners, it seems like crow pose is the most attainable and accessible to most students. And I don't like to umbrella statement that because everybody is truly different, which I totally respect and understand. However, crow pose, let's start there. And I don't even like to call it a beginner arm balance, but for lack of better words, let's call crow pose our beginner arm balance. You'll start off in your malasana shape which is garland pose in English. This is where I am now. Ah, rude. 
So just this little low squat situation, looking like a little ninja over here. From the side, you'll start here. This is just a warm up through the hips, play with weight shifting, so he's nice. And you take your hands out in front of you, shoulder width distance, so you're not super wide, your hands aren't super close together, you are at shoulder width distance. Utilize your finger pads. So in your yoga practice, that is called your asta bandha. It's a finger pad lock. There's a lot of strength in the hands, so use it. Your hands are essentially becoming your feet. Hands are the foundation of the posture. You'll adjust the feet. You want to angle your toes so that they are pointing towards your wrists. I suppose I should ditch this so that I don't look like a floating head. From there, you bend your elbows back. Not out to the sides, my friends. You bend your elbows back. From elbows back, you then create a shelf. Your triceps, back line of the arms, are creating a shelf for your knees and your shins. So that's the point of contact you are going for. What I want you to try to plant in your headspace, think knees into your armpits of success, okay? Armpits of success, tuck them in high, as high as you can at any rate, especially when you're just starting with the posture. So you're pushing your hands into the floor, bent elbows back, bent knees forward. First progression here, my friends, is to lift your heels. And you do not have to go any further than this. You can lift your heels and this can very well be enough and this is an incredible place to build strength. It's almost like this hollowing of the navel center. Then you're pushing so strong into your hands that you are rounding your upper back. That action is protracting of the shoulder blades. So all these details are very, very important when you are trying to take flight in your yoga practice. Pushing hands, hollow out the belly. Lift your heels, progression one. You stay, find your focus. Do not drop the chin towards the chest. Keep looking forward and ahead of the finger tips. Then, as this starts to feel more comfortable, relative anyways, you start to do the tap dance. You lift your toes. Okay, I'm here. I'm breathing. Navel in. Push into the floor. Then, maybe, hold, breathe. Maybe, gaze is still steady. Navel in. Push your hands into the floor. Hug your elbows in. If the elbows start to splay, the pose will die. The pose will die. The knees go. You have to hug your elbows in towards the midline of the body the whole time that you're in the posture. If and when, You've got your one set of toes off of the ground. Well then, spoiler alert, draw the navel in, push your hands into the floor, keep breathing, you lift up both sets of toes. Now, as I've already said, if the elbows start to splay, it may be not that graceful, maybe not that slow, but then you'll face plant and you might end up on the floor. Other notes, if you have the fear of falling, you have to get rid of it. You want your thoughts to feed flight rather than falling and hitting the ground. So grab a yoga block, grab a blanket. If you don't have those actual yoga props, it's not a big deal. Grab a pillow, okay? Grab something to put in front of your face. That way you don't have the fear of falling. You are not doing this arm balance for the first time on cement. One more time, what that looks like. As you push your hands into the floor, do the tap dance. Squeeze the low belly, push, gaze is steady. Lift one lift both. Now for those of you that already have pro pose, your bakasana, if this is old news, I get it, then you're ready to advance. That's why this is progressive teaching. You then get the knees super high, you start to straighten your elbows. So that's shifting from a crow into crane. From either bent or straight elbows, flex your feet, start to lift your toes towards the wrist creases. Hold, say five to eight rounds of breath. That's it for your crow pose. Be really mindful. I would say it's a great counter pose after that. Two things. You want to stretch out your wrist. Not super great on cement, but for the video. Go para hastasana, that is hand to foot. Backs of your hands to the floor. Great stretch for the wrist. Bend your knees as much as you need to make this happen, yeah? One palm at a time, right underneath the feet. Right under, bend your elbows out to the side. Relax your neck. You want the head to be super duper heavy. Second counter pose. So that was a lot of rounding, right? A lot of rounding on the back body. Do a little crab walk so I'm in frame. Drive into your heels, push into your hands. You reverse your tabletop. Gaze is up or throat is open and you're gazing towards a wall or towards the intercoastal behind you. You're squeezing your shoulder blades in. What I often say when I'm teaching is that there's a pencil between your shoulder blades and you're trying to squeeze that in between them. So that's a nice uh, counter pose after the protracting, the rounding from crow pose. That's it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. It would mean so much to me. I'm aiming to upload new videos every week. I would love to see you in my next video. Thank you guys. Have a beautiful day, a great week. You deserve it. You are worthy of it. And I will see you all soon. Um, flew through, flew through. Feet, quite chilly this morning.